Hi all, welcome to another very, very exciting, in a nutshell, chess game. Let's look at Daniel Harwitz against Adolf Anson. So these two players were among the strongest of their era. And it was at the time when opening theory was in its infancy. And uh, we see here a King's Gambit, it's a romantic era of chess. Daniel Harwitz playing white, e4, e5, f4, takes. and. Routinely, maybe a lot of players nowadays play knight f3. That is the most popular move. But uh, there's another move, bishop c4, which was played here. This is actually the second most popular move in live book. With careful play, black should be able to get a very, very decent position. Uh, it is tempting to play this check. And in this game, we do see this check, which might not be the best move technically. The Queen is subject to big tempo gains potentially. After King F1, uh, there's still it's still a very, very good position for black, uh, despite the potential tempo gain. For example, a move like D6 or even D5 can be very handy like this. And black's fine, even if the Queen went to H6, black would be fine. And it's dangerous for white. But uh, in this game, black took another liberty here, bishop c5. It, while it cuts across the diagonal, it might seem quite aggressively posted on this diagonal. It is itself subject to tempo gain. And also, of course, is potentially neglecting this diagonal. We see knight f3 kicking the queen. The queen goes back to uh, e7. And actually, this is quite a cunning move if white, especially if white reacted here a bit too ambitiously, for example, with knight e5, but he didn't. On knight e5, knight f6, it doesn't matter about the f pawn in this position, but it ends up with a very good position. For example, takes here, and then like rook f8 off the black would end up being fine. Uh, or knight takes, it doesn't really matter after knight f6 knight takes uh, this position th sorry this position with knight takes rook f8 knight e5 knight c6 there's a lot of pressure actually on white center and this rook it, it is essentially like a poison pawn taking this because this rook is kind of stirring against the king here so actually it works very well in black's favor if white played knight e5 but a much stronger move is played here after this very provocative queen e7 which is just support the pawn and also try and get another big tempo game with knight d5 so this is much stronger than knight e5 uh, stable simple development with the pawn duo both knights developed very simple looking and effective knight f6 and here black tries to hold on to his uh, f pawn but there's a kind of weakness of the last move here another big tempo gain which you might not think is necessarily completely significant assuming and the big assumption here is that white would take on f4 if we have a brief look at this the queen going back to d8 might not be that bad if knight takes f4 happens for example like this with d5 even as a temporary pawn sack black will end up with an active position white's king is misplaced there's compensation but in this position white plays a crucial move which exposes many of the downsides of black's position can you see what white played here if i give you five seconds starting from now It's actually quite a crushing move, setting the tone for the rest of the game. Okay, g4, yeah, a big tempo gain, a pawn sack to break open this diagonal and get another big tempo gain on the queen. So fg, bishop g5, and this bishop is looking irrelevant on b6. f6 is played, which of course weakens this diagonal e takes g takes and while the king's on f1 it looks as though 
um, black might have a chance here but this next move kind of is really crushing now white to play if I give you five seconds with the king on f1 you might think you have to be careful by the way about this f file but white played knight e5 hitting the knight on h5 black now maybe he was banking on this next move just to castle so look at the f file it looks as though there's going to be maybe some trouble for the white king but white just took on h5 allowing this check f takes g5 check but here guess what white plays i'll give you five seconds starting from now okay this check is answered with double check which means actually here only the king can move uh the king has to move nothing can be interposed the king goes actually to g7 it looks as though the knight's pretty fragile but white's play finishes off very nicely here can you see okay queen takes h7 check and there's only one move and often now it's yep knight g4 is checkmate it's it's one of the more crushing games of their match uh, in 1848 uh, it was especially after 18 around 1866 uh, and really took off of, as a player by the way so more than 50 years of age after 1866 he really became a fantastic combinatory attacking player but I guess he must have learned a lesson or two from this brutal defeat it's uh, it became yeah he, he he I don't think this kind of humiliating defeat would be repeated that much in later years as he became one of the strongest players in the world for sure but that was like uh, you know 15 years later we're talking 15 plus years later but a great early lesson for him on the black side here against you know Daniel Harwitz who himself is one of the leading players of the time it shows how this variation of the King's Gambit blacks really uh, walking on thin ice and took one or two liberties perhaps expecting knight e5 there instead of knight c3 the g4 really exposed all the downsides of black gaining even more tempo which were crucial it's just irresistible attack with loads of spectator pieces here in the final position of course and that f file never really being able to be used by black not enough time and resource i hope you enjoyed this uh comments questions likes appreciated Thanks very much.